for the first time on a Monday morning, we get to see the colors of the sky yet again because there's no sign of a shower. Oh, blessing. Welcome to Good Morning Uganda and welcome to a brand new day as well as a brand new week. It is the 18th of October 2021. My name is Priscilla Naloga and thank you so much for choosing UBC Television as your preferred network of information this morning. On Good Morning Uganda, of course, as we start of a brand new week we definitely have a lot in stock for you but before we go any further allow me to introduce to you the fantastic three good morning to you robert Chiravo. good morning to you priscilla how are you my um very fine you know uganda is one of the very few countries in the world where both the national anthem and the port of arms the, uh, clearly portray the godliness of the nation so i'm very fine because we are just from the weekend yesterday was sunday and you and went to was church? spiritual feeding okay where i went to though churches are still require asking government but depending on the size of the church to allow them have more people but you see, you, uh, people uh, look at that argument from mm. one side because mm. if your church can have a capacity of maybe up to 500 people how about the chuempe churches how about those tiny churches that means they're going to be having 10 so people. depending on size of the church <laughs> if you have a cathedral <laughs> so like namilembe mm -hmm. that can accommodate about maybe 2000 people mm. then why not allow them to have more people Okay. If you have a chuempe that can accommodate uh, 50, definitely you won't have even, even have the 200 because of social distancing, they won't be there. Okay, that's aspects. a very interesting argument. But what did the preacher preach about yesterday? Well, uh, he talked about repentance, saying that the sicknesses we are seeing, the, the evil is a representation of the return of Christ Jesus. So okay. he says we better prepare our souls, our spirits, anytime, any day. You might face your creator, but are you prepared? Okay, well, all right. Good morning to you, Molen Kenyana, and thank you so much for joining us for yet another week. Yes, a very good morning to you, Priscilla, and of course, uh, the men on this team. A very good morning to you, Robert and Felix. And I also want to extend a good morning to our family at Good Morning Uganda. Well, we just came from a weekend, but uh, Mondays, there's always something scary about Mondays. It's like they're just going to stay. but. Yes, it's here. How did you spend your weekend? Uh, my weekend was uh, mostly celebrations. And uh, yeah, <laughs> one of my friends uh, was having a birthday yesterday, but also the, the, the celebrations continue even up today. By the to you, Donate, a lot of celebrations. Even myself, I was celebrating myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a good weekend for Molen. Was it a good weekend for you, Felix Nkunda? Good morning. Yeah. It was quite a long one, um, actually a short one, I must say. But uh, it was a good weekend. I had to cover up lots of work I did in terms of uh, the other things I do for my livelihood. Uh, and uh, I bless God that it's another new week with new opportunities, new challenges, and of course new blessings ahead of all the things that we do. But uh, allow me also ask Modin, at what age do people stop celebrating birthdays? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, probably I should rephrase it and maybe all for me I, I need to understand at what age does someone should stop to have the excitement of celebrating birthdays. I see, I see mostly women do these whole celebrations and you know, they even buy a birthday shower, what? I did. Birthday what? Yeah. <laughs> so Priscilla. Uh, I maybe more I, I don't know. I wouldn't stop celebrating, and no one should ever stop. Uh, we do throw birthday parties even for a 65 year old. Your father is making 70, you throw one. Someone is making uh, 80. It's always a reason to celebrate. Whenever you add a year, it is a reason to celebrate. <coughs> I don't think we should ever stop. Okay. And the excitement is equally I think as good as when you were 16. It shouldn't be about the excitement for the day uh, felix don't get it out of context i think the point of celebrating a year added unto you is the fact that it's not a given 
life is not a given today i'm here tomorrow i may not be here so every single time you get to make another year you have to celebrate it you have gone through so many things in the year uh, that has passed people <coughs> have lost loved ones challenges disease mm. uh, you know financial troubles covid 19 is here and it has changed the face of everything and so people do bring out the very best to imitate the celebration that is in their hearts for how far they've actually come. So that's the whole point of celebration. And we should never said stop celebrating until the day we actually rest eternally. And then, even then, people still celebrate you memorial services every year. So celebrations are celebrations. Thanksgiving. Exactly. That look how far I have come. It's not been by my mighty, but the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So you celebrate a year, 12 months. <laughs> you see, Those days, there is, many people don't make it there. So you're thanking God, you're rejoicing, saying, oh, so Felix, thus far the Lord has brought me. Advise, uh, when do you want people to actually think, stop you know, having I, fancy birthdays? I think and Robert, why? Robert places it in the right context. Away from the whole idea of just celebrating because you're growing, 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 growing. But Robert brings it to the context of thanksgiving. And for me, I think that's now, it, it makes lots of sense from that way. So, but why, when, when do you want to, or when did you stop celebrating your birthday? Does he even <laughs> celebrate his birthday? That's the bigger question here. When I do know. You I, celebrate? Celebrations are enough in my heart. Yeah. And those things of Kajanja, what, what, you know. Now you know. Celebrations involve merrymaking, even yeah. Thanksgiving. We have witnesses, come and see. See what? You know, come and uh, party with me, enjoy with me, as I'm saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As, as I'm saying, you, and, it's, and birthdays, yeah. also, if you to evaluate, you know, yes, I've now turned 34. Okay, it is my birthday today. What have I achieved? What are some of maybe the habits I should put aside? I'm now beginning another year, a journey of my life. What are my targets? So it's a big thing. It's really a one man's thing. meat is another man's poison it's as simple as that but here in good morning uganda we definitely have to get the week started <laughs> and the day equally started with what we always cook for you every single morning a cup of brewed coffee that has a lot of things that we're going to be discussing but first allow us to first take you through the course of the weekend and the stories that actually shaped the weekend starting with the local stories and yesterday having been a sunday for christians uh, hundreds gather thousands to places of worship and we bring you a story where the church are continuing to advise masses to embrace vaccination and adhere to standard operating procedures as a way of curbing COVID-19. The mass vaccination exercise has also been embraced by many giving hope that more numbers would be allowed for worship in the near future. On the 22nd of September, this year, President Jerry Museveni made a pronouncement of the reopening of churches with strict adherence to SOPs. Close to a month now, most of the churches have embraced the social distancing norm, washing of hands in the fight against COVID-19. Churches have now gone ahead to task worshippers to embrace vaccination, just like the rest of the world, as a way of protecting worshippers against the deadly pandemic. The new normal, however, is far more of churches to embrace digital broadcasting using television and different social media platforms to reach out to their masses. Churches, on the other hand, continue to request government for more numbers depending on what capacity a certain church can take in as long as they maintain SOPs. The Ministry of Health is on the drive of having at least 7 million people vaccinated across the country and so far many people have taken up their jobs. Pope Francis has summoned all bishops across the world for a synod convention scheduled for October 2023 to be held in Rome. This communication was disclosed by the Uganda Episcopal Conference Chairperson, Bishop Dr. Anthony Ziwa, while presiding over a Sunday Mass at Mitiana Cathedral in Mitiana Diocese. The Minister for Lands, Judith Nabakova, who was flanked by Mitiana Municipality Member of Parliament, Francis Zake Butebi, were in attendance. The Bishops' Convention will be held in October 2023 and will be run under the theme The Church Built on the Synod of Communion, Participation and Evangelism. In line with the theme, 
Bishop Anthony Ziwa challenged leaders at all levels to serve mankind above self. It was during this same mass that preparations for the 40th pastoral celebrations for the diocese were announced. These are slated for the 21st of November and will be partly scientific. Still regarding places of worship, the Patriarch of Alexandria and the whole of Africa, Pope Theodore II, presided over a memorial mass and prayer service in honor of the late Archbishop of the Orthodox Church of Uganda, Metropolitan Yona Ranga, at St. Nicholas Orthodox Cathedral, Namungona. Pope Theodore II was received by believers and friends of the Orthodox Cathedral in Namungona. It is a tradition of the Orthodox Church to hold a commemorative service for a beloved one after a period of 40 days of death. A commemorative mass officiated by the Pope, uh, Theodore of Alexandria, and the whole of Africa at St. Nicholas Orthodox Namungona was for the late who died in Athens in Greece on the 5th of September at the age of 76 years. The Pope also commended President Museveni for the cardinal treatment accorded to him since his arrival in Uganda. He also hailed the late General Ranga for the love he had for his country and the region at large. The Prime Minister, Robin Nabanja, has advised persons living in steep and hilly areas around the country to plant trees around hilly sites to control landslides. The Premier was visiting Bududa district after reports of landslides around Mount Elgon area. She said those living in ecologically delicate areas should be relocated to safer areas. Bududa district is again in the news for the wrong reason and the area earlier this week experienced landslides yet again. On learning about the landslides, Prime Minister Robin Andabanja visited the area and they have done a quick assessment and possible intervention. The Premier advised residents to voluntarily vacate the area to safer places as government prepares for long-lasting solutions. Later, a community meeting was held in which political leaders led by the Area Woman Member of Parliament, Agnes Nandutu, explained to the Premier their plight and suggested possible solutions. Residents expressed the desire to shift to safer places within Bugisu but not too far away. And now we turn our attention to international news. Now in our international stories, a pastor will be looking at China coming out to slam U.S. Canada for sending warships through Taiwan Straits. Now the Chinese military condemned the United States and the Canada and Canada state uh, for each sending a warship through the Taiwan Strait last week. Now saying the North American nations were threatening peace and stability in that particular region. Now China's People Liberation Army East and uh, East Theater Command said its forces monitored the ships and stood guard throughout their passage now united states and canada also collided to provoke the stair up trouble seriously jeopardizing the peace and stability of taiwan straight there and uh, also taiwan's part of taiwan is part of chinese territory a theater forces also maintained a high level of alert and resolutely counter all threats or provocation that may be made against any of the chinese territories Now still about the same, three white Americans are go on trial in death of black jogger, that is Ahmoud Abiri. Uh, three white men in the U.S. state of Georgia will go on trial Monday in the high-profile shooting death for a black jogger that sparked a national outcry and helped fuel last summer's social justice protest. Uh, Gregory uh, Michael, that is uh, the, the age of uh, 65, his son Travis, 35, and their neighbor William Bryan, 52, have been charged with murder and aggravated assault after chasing 25-year-old Alda Med and shooting him during a confrontation in February 2020. The father and the son uh, followed Aberry in, in a pickup truck while Brian trailed uh, them in his own vehicle and filmed the scene after an altercation. Travis Markell opened fire and killed Aberry. Matters also have been put onto a national consultancy where we see the death of many black people in America again needs to be questioned. Now also looking at our international stories back to Africa in Nigeria 
who wants Israel to accept them as Jews. Now rocking back and forth, that is Shlomo Ben Yaakov uh, reads from a Torah scroll at a synagogue on the outskirts of Nigerian capital Abuja. That is uh, intimately also his soft, mellow voice raises a uh, Hebrew and he also conjoins dozens of others. Most do not uh, fully understand the language, but this small Nigerian community claims Jewish ancestry dating back hundreds of years and that they are left frustrated by a lack of recognition from Israel. Now, I consider myself a Jew, says Mr. Yaakov, outside the Gino Hebrew synagogue in the suburbs of uh, Jikoi, a table in the laid inside the tent built from, that is, a palm leaves and celebrate Sukkot also making mention that if they are not accepted as Jews, they would feel retrieved from what they believe certainly as people who consider to have come from that sort of lineage. Weather and climate news, dozens are missing in a deadly Indian disaster. Now, at least 26 people have been killed in floods in southern India after heavy rains caused rivers to overflow, cutting off towns and villages. Now, five children are among the dead, and there are fears that the death toll could rise further as many people are missing. Several houses were washed away, and people became trapped in the district of Kotayam in Kerala state. Video from the area showed bus passengers being rescued after their vehicle was inundated with the flood waters. Days of heavy rainfall in Kerala has caused deadly landslides and the Indian military has joined rescue efforts. Helicopters have been used to fly in supplies and personnel to areas where people have been trapped under debris by landslides, officials said on Sunday. In one tragic incident, a family of six, including a 70-year-old grandmother and three children, were confirmed dead after their home in Kotayam West was swept away, news agencies PTI reported. Now, the bodies of, an, of other three children, aged eight, seven, and four, were also found buried under the debris in Iduki district, where the search continued for at least five other missing people, as the agency says. Just the country, but also the globe. You've looked at the story of disaster preparedness in India, as well as the Nigerians who have uh, some original Jews there. And to many of you may be wondering, Nigerians, Jews? No, that cannot be. Well, when you look at history, and if you were to trust the maps and footsteps of the Jews, well, find a way because initially, ancient as it may sound, they do come somewhere from Nigerian roots. Uh, some of them. So that is a very interesting story that you can dig up to. But sticking, speaking of digging up stories, uh, this morning we do have NSSF that we are hosting for our Good Morning Uganda agenda. And uh, who do we have as our guest? Well, we are having uh, the representative of the National Union that brings together various uh, unions. Uh, that is the Workers' Voice. Uh, that is Asha Wilson, who will be with us here. And we'll be discussing uh, an update of the bill, but also some concerns where is the money mm -hmm. so he will be responding to that okay. as well but of course i can't uh, to remind you that as you pray for life ensure you boost your immune system for us we believe faith without action is dead so as you pray for life ensure that you take hallelujah jinga tea and hallelujah turmeric drink because they are naturally made but they also boost your immune system and that is what you need to fight diseases in your body well, speaking of union, still even in our news reel, it's 7 o'clock hour, we are going to be talking about the suggested East African Students Union that will cover the East African countries to aid the trend of education within the region. Molen Kenyana, uh, what do we have this morning? Well, uh, for the very first time, uh, the UN Human Rights Committee has declared a clean and healthy environment as a human right. Now we have more stories on that. I am interested to see, and it's actually a, a day to celebrate for a lot of environmental activists seeing this declared as a, a human right. That should be interesting. Uh, the way Felix is digesting that news is 
quite yeah. confusing. His facial expression. He wants to bring in all the <laughs> other, we are what all the articles. <laughs> just to respect some basic human rights. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now a clean environment. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The question is, uh, I think the, the, the biggest controversy will be about who is mandated to provide. Mm. People yeah, demand does, for does, it. Does the owners go to government? Does it go to private institutions? Is it also to people. That we don't okay. have other rights. No That's wonder we have Molen. Yeah, we will we'll right. dive in and look into what, what this actually means. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Felix Nkoda, what is our poll question this morning? Well, of course, our poll question will be springing from the same discussion in our news where we'll be trying to pick out your sentiments about uh, this whole East African Students' Union and uh, how will the, information, the formation of the East African Students' Union benefit students from Uganda. And that's good for starters. Having a big spectrum about East African community, now we're trying to focus on students. How will this formation of the East African Students' Union benefit students from Uganda? And you can be able to share your thoughts, your opinions, to our pages that is on Twitter, hashtag UBCGMU, and on WhatsApp, 0709602592. Same on Facebook, and of course, for those who are following us on uh, all other platforms like YouTube, you can be able to leave a message. Also, most uh, ancient we want to bring back is SMS. You can share SMS through the same numbers. Okay, thank you so much. And in the world of sports, the Star Times Uganda Premier League did kick off on Friday. Uh, today we do have a fixture that is between Gaddafi FC and Busoka United. Ruben Pima Chibirango will be here to give you more details into the weekend results as well as what to look at for in the world of sports this morning, later on at 8.30. So stick around for that. It is still good morning, Uganda. However, allow us to take a short break when we return the East African Students' Union.
Better yet, you automatically receive free 1 GB valid for 30 days. <laughs> you are hooked already, aren't you? Enjoy a 100% double data bonus from Airtel. Buy a smartphone from anywhere in Uganda and insert an Airtel SIM card. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for 3 months. Dial star 175 hash and select your preferred bundle to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for 3 months. Airtel, the smartphone network. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Live from Nile Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. Good morning once again. Thank you so much for joining us here on UBC. Yet a brand new day, Monday the 18th of October 2021. My name is Priscilla Naloga alongside Felix Nkunde and Robert Chirabo. And this 7 o'clock hour, we get to have a conversation around our newsreel, which doesn't fall far from our poll question this morning, which we want to just give you a hint about in case you've just joined us for the show. Well, and our poll question, how will the formation of the East African Students' Union benefit students from Uganda? How will the formation of the East African Students' Union benefit students from Uganda? Well, thank you so much. And now looking at the launch of the East African Students' Union uh, that was launched over the weekend. When you look at the East African Treaty, this is a treaty that allows the member states to have free freedom of goods, of services, and labor. And that is for the member states that we're looking at, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan. Those are the six member states. Now, education falls under services that are rendered and within the East African mm. community, over time, we have had transfer of students from one partner state to another seeking for better education services. We have had Tanzanians coming to Uganda seeking for better higher education, even university education. We have had people crossing from Uganda going to Nairobi, Kenya uh, for better education services. And that has had its challenges over the time. One of the challenges has been the fees, the tuition fees, dubbing them as international students because they're not citizens of a member state in particular they get to pay double fees but as of yesterday we had the secretary general dr peter mathuki launching the first team and the first leadership of the east african community students union that is going to handle these regional challenges and find a union uh, a solution that can help everyone without really necessarily relying on the national unions for each member state that's a conversation we want to dig in here but i'll start with felix um uh, he has had the privilege of studying from abroad and we want to find out as a student what were some of those challenges that you experienced uh, studying abroad, right from getting um, a course and then getting the paperwork done, the student's visa, right to you know getting into that university or that school that you went to, and the challenges as an international student, quote unquote. I, I love the fact that Priscilla is hyping me. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you see, when you talk about international student, it, it's a good mm -hmm. feeling. Not until they tell you that there's an additional fee for being international student. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, fortunately, unfortunately, it wasn't in a, one of the East African countries. It was actually yeah. far. Mm -hmm. But uh, it comes with more or less the similar challenges, as, as you've put it. Uh, however, without uh, consideration to the latter interest in it, which is probably achieving of a particular award, uh, which could be a bachelor's or postgraduate or whatever. <coughs> Away from that, the biggest challenges are not actually part of the primary purpose, but are what we call their technical challenges. For example, you look at additional fees, and it's the same thing in Uganda. I'm also uh, have relating myself with teaching still in Uganda, probably at a higher level. You find that even the fees for so-called international students, you realize that there's an additional fee. Go to, uh, you go to Makere, the, the Mkumbas, the Mkonos. There's an, the payment is different. And what matters, as long as you, you, you cross a border, that's the qualification for you to be an international student. Mm -hmm. Now, that in its own self, it means that that additional charge is a deterrence to the service. I know for a fact that <clears throat> by being international students, you already have additional charges that you suffer from. Like, for example, movement. Let's imagine you have to have a flight from here to the UK. You'll spend about another, not less than at least $500, mm -hmm. rather pounds for that matter, to 1000 depending on the season. That is just in transport. You have to cater for welfare, blah, 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 and all Housing, that. Housing, yes. Mm. All that. And then on top of that, you pay a fee for being international or a non-state member of that mm. country. Mm. So just about that, you notice that it is a big hindrance. If I bring it back to East Africa, <coughs> as, as, as uh, the, the thesis, you, the, 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 the preamble you gave about this whole topic, the question is, the existence of these what we call technical challenges in terms of education, it is a true contradiction of the East African uh, community, the law that establishes, but also initially there were three protocols the, and the three additional protocols. It is a total contradiction. And if you have, um, <clears throat> because if you're talking, if you go into the, the definition of the word integration per se, even if you're not to, 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 to use legal jargons and what, just the literal meaning of integration. Mm -hmm. To integrate is to lose in the other. You integrate. <clears throat> Let's imagine if uh, my brother Robert and me, we agree to integrate our families. It means you're going to ha work in the same space, same resources, eliminate barriers that define him to be him and, sorry, define me to be me. Now, integration, what is, if, <coughs> have, have we appreciated the integration to the fullest? And the beauty about the East African community, it even highlights how the integration will be and what it shall cover. Mm. You get it? Okay. It talks about, for example, if uh, you, you have additional protocols, I think you have protocol establishment of East African Health and Research Commission. Now, these ones are most recent. These are just the ones they added, the two they added. Then the protocol uh, establishment of the East African Kiswahili Commission, but also the previous three were establishment, uh, the East African Common Markets, Customs Union, and I think uh, Monetary Union, if you remember those. Mm. The, and of course, the and these ones are legislated. Mm. And the end was supposed to be the political union. Now, if you even evaluate all of them, you find that the abuse of some of these small things have totally eliminated the purpose of the integration and more to that maybe we will look in it but but i feel that <coughs> this comes at in at a time where there's a lot of things trying the east african community okay uh robert in your opinion is there any defense to the uh, to the extra <coughs> charge that comes with being quote unquote international student yet you're within the member state of the east african community and also one of the other challenges that these students have been claiming over <coughs> this whole East African education crossing border to border is uh, the corruption at the borders that they're facing with the immigration officers who are asking them for an extra 
kind kidogo here and there to be able to allow them to get into uh, another country or to access the education that they've come to access here uh, with student visas or no student visas that's the other challenge so these two challenges um, are, are they actually reasonable challenges or is it something that could have been still handled at the national union levels well when we look at this union it brings together six national unions that is every country had a student <coughs> union that was powerful in itself but you see when you fight alone you may not win the battle uh, like felix said we are looking at bottlenecks to this a uh, strong east african community that we are uh, praying and believing that one day we shall have so the education sector is one of the most powerful ingredients for a successful uh, regional block because you must have people that are going to compete with other regions now when it comes to corruption indeed corruption is a bottleneck it's a hindrance to a lot of things so if now uh, kenyan students are not viewed as kenyan students they're viewed as east african students meaning that what will affect a kenyan student under this union will affect the entire east african community and the protocols we've been signing that look for free movement free trade uh, free employment then we shall see that a kenyan student will be treated as a kenyan student while in uganda but because we are the same people we integrated it will be very visible that we have a similar body that we are all members of this union so it will be easy for a common voice not a single voice that could look at certainly university that charge extra fees even from primary secondary some schools even in uganda and other east african member states charge extra money so if this body comes together and says no if we are students all in east africa we shouldn't have these barriers why are you going to corrupt someone when you know there's a strong body that is fighting against this you're not seeing them as just sudanese for uganda's case we have some in sudanese here so to me i believe uh, corruption is something that this body can fight now when we go to this extra fee uh, previously you know we once had that East African community then collapsed and we had the rebirth of this but some of these uh, started long ago even before the community now the establishment of a community that has a vision and a mission they cease to hold water to have value because if we are now free people in, a, in this community why are you charging me extra that means uh, in one way or the other you're working against what we've agreed upon movement should not uh, have these differences uh, because you are ugandan it's not only about documents but you're going to charge an extra at entry even services provided shouldn't have this so for me i see yes these are reasonable issues that they are putting on table and uh, if we want to see a strong community we must have a community of educated people and these differences should be removed the only challenge will remain how do we up the game of standards okay of education so All that right. at least uh, if you study from any part of east africa you have valid education at a level that is equal so that we have removed these balances uh, that maybe uh, uganda have so many come to uganda and then very few maybe go to a country like maybe south sudan and you remember well um he brings out a very good point in terms of the standards of education and it causes me to ask maybe now is the time not even just look at the launch of the students union for the east african region but also as you had mentioned it both of you that the integration of, of education for example understandably the laws in um the school of law in uganda is the best in the east african region so why wouldn't we call then for these very same platforms for advocating of placement or partnership in education Education, for example, School of Law in Makere University, partnering with a member uh, school or let me say, University of Nairobi. Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. Okay. It's equally very good. It's equally very good. Very good. Yes. So you do have uh, the School of Law from Makere University setting up a branch, maybe in Nairobi, in Rwanda, or in oh. South Sudan, uh, to be able to then extend the service closer to those students without necessarily having them go through the cost of crossing the border and the the cost of livelihood in I them wish, being international I students. I wish I could take Priscilla to Madam Kadaga, who is now the <laughs> Minister of East Africa. <laughs> you would have a very good conversation. 
but, because but we're, we're seeing it a lot. Uh, we're seeing it a lot with UK universities that are having placement programs here with uh, know, particular universities in Africa, even, and uh, even they're in enhancing what, you know some of those yeah, sectors that could be undereducated no, but, here. No, but, but Priscilla, even what you're saying, UK to Uganda is far fetched. Yeah. You when UK before the Brexit was in the European Union, you would, you know. What I'm like, the, 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 there was meaningful integration, and that's what I said earlier. Before we jump even into these things of students, manyanga, come, go, what uh, we and and for me, <laughs> I beg even to contra to, to get something quite contrary to what they are suggesting because the starting point is integration. All these things they will discuss, manya, union, students, who, what. Mm. The unions are as good as meaningless if, if the integration not and accepted is at the helm not of there. the community. When you still have countries that close borders coming to how many years now? Between Rwanda and Uganda. Mm -hmm. Now, you're talking about is the union in Rwanda really going to come in this or the one in you? You, you, you get, there's a mismatch. I think we are placing our energies in wrong places. I have had discussions and I want to even challenge on air. We have had these questions. You, today, Uganda is giving out what we call East African passports. passports yes. But I want to ask you, you mm. people, you, we, we are all in media, some of you people travel. Is it good enough? How do you own an East African passport and still have to get a visa mm. in East Africa? Mm. It Where make is sense the integration? Does it make yeah. sense for no, you? No, it doesn't. Now, before you iron out those issues, don't bring these things of student union. Mm. Because you're just going to find other positions to waste, to waste out the budget. When you still have Ugandans being killed in Sudan, and we can't handle that at the summit level. Those are the challenges. I think the starting point should be, let's discuss what kind of integration we have. The European Union, when you're in UK, you can simply drive to Germany, France, and drive. The only thing you have to show at the border is identity, which is a good mm -hmm. security purposes. Train. You can, because there was meaningful integration. One of the reasons why the, the, the British wanted to exit was because people were leaving other countries because of integration to mm -hmm. go and settle there because of the benefits they would get mm -hmm. in terms of when they grow old. When, it is because there was meaningful inter, excuse me, integration. Now, do we have meaningful integration? You're talking about putting a law school in Kenya. Go and put it there. They will burn it. They will burn it. Why? Because they will tell you, we also have a law school here. Yes, there is more of competition than then integration. Then why are students uh, Felix, crossing over to another happened, country because it's uh, a better uh, service African elsewhere? Parliament, where just positions of a clerk and deputy clerk. <laughs> we see our this own minister. No, not even media because... If you have uh, the be. clerk to that parliament here mm. writing a letter, you have the uh, minister, Rebecca, right on Rebecca Kadaga, writing and saying, hold the recruitment. So there's still so much for us to understand the vision Actually, of integration that's it. than just saying. Because you see what happens. So it is no purpose for the education sector to pull themselves out of it you know, and find their own you way can't, of integration. You can't. Right. Because this is the East African integration. Mm -hmm. It must start from somewhere to somewhere. For example, you can't say, I want to be a good mother, but I, don't, I hate men. Oh, I can't, I can't, in, uh, inter I can't have intercourse. You, okay. you, you, you talk about motherhood, be ready to talk about sexual intercourse or marriage or whatever. You can't say, ah, it's one night. Or your mama murunji in bed. How? Mm. One, one thing leads to the other. Never be again. You get it. Mm. So, okay. if you don't talk about anything to do with students, and it has the word East Africa, you must revisit integration. Do we have integration? Where well, we still have and you see these things seem small you've seen issues at the border kenya uganda mm -hmm. but someone has an east african <laughs> passport and then you say someone has overstayed with integration mm. then they tell you you can't work here without a work permit yeah. i have people in kenya they tell you they have been, your, they your have been national deported. id can allow you to cross to another country have you, you get to the border and I then said, no you need i have seen I have, I have i have clients and colleagues who have been thrown out of kenya because they don't have work permits in an, and yet they have an east african 
passport. So the biggest issue I think here is for us, you know, the first East African community suffered some of the setbacks we are seeing that are about to suffer this, is that people at the helm had a vision and understood the whole essence of integration. But they failed to trickle this down to the ordinary person, to push for the voice in the same direction. That is why you see that when you look at some of the leaders in the East African mm -hmm. community that actually were there in the beginning of the reviving of the East African community, even when you go to their countries, you see that they have opened up, one of them being our own president. Mm. When you go to other countries that, yes, maybe their leaders found this on the move, have not yet appreciated what is the vision, the mission, and the benefits of the East African community, which was the problem. That's why we see at times egos at play. That is why we see uh, at times unhealth competition among pattern states, because they have totally failed to understand why are we integrating? What are the benefits? What are we losing? Even these protocols Felix talked about that have now gone to phase two, many of them are behind schedule. The implementation is behind schedule. <laughs> they have right. Yes. <laughs> That's it. They are so yeah. late. What they had set as their deadlines is long expired. Looking at and some of the reactions someone? here, we do have someone who has sent us an SMS. Students' union is mandatory. However, we must have unified language, such as students from Kenya. Uh, Uganda can easily adopt in Kenya, can easily adopt in Tanzania, in Rwanda, or even in South Sudan. Apart from English, and by the way, English language is a culture in some countries, we need to have our own culture and language. S uh, secondary is uh, the fees structure also challenges students especially international students within the region and also another response here East African Students Union has been there only that it hasn't been recognized and now it's been officially launched many students unions are in existence to help each other with the challenges government should also provide security for East African students unions as uh, such as uh, free visas and also last lastly students should be offered job assurance and insurance which which actually also begs the question mm -hmm. of, yeah, you may study from Uganda, but then when it comes to getting a job within Uganda, is it How easier? Easy is How, it? How easy is it? Because you they know, still won't regard you as, I mean, as, a, as a, a local. They will treat you as... You have to get a, a work permit. You have to get a work permit, exactly. All those things. Yeah. I, I've heard uh, most previously that Rwanda is getting teachers from now Zimbabwe. Zambia was in one of those countries. What happened to Uganda teachers or Kenya or what? Mm. You get the thing mm. that we are now we are looking at uh, at professional interface in the integration. Is that professional interface? Is it something doable? Okay. But we are we are in an integra in integration where we seem like we are competing. Yes. Uganda, right. take take your maze there. It is what then after you accept it. What was the use? Was mm. it in Uganda? We normally say like kunda visa. Were you trying to <laughs> to, to to expose me? Okay. But you refuse, now you're accepting. Another SMS here. You can't talk about East, uh, East Students Union when Rwandan borders are still closed for Ugandans. Another message. East African Students Unions should stay with leadership unions. Those are very interesting responses. Looking at some of the SMSs that have been shared, we do have Tony Kent Chaze. The union being a mouthpiece and patron of students' affairs is likely to harmonize regional standards in line with academics benefits opportunities and prospects but that is above the union because the students union needs to cater for students strictly but then what he's referring to here is goes back to the east african community the assembly the spearheaders of you know the whole east african integration that's where the whole benefits opportunities and prospects would fall and uh, he ends by saying surely if, the, if this doesn't benefit ugandan students then there's no need for the union you see, Priscilla, when you uh, the foundation of anything yeah. is very important. Mm -hmm. The foundation of the East African community, we must revise it. We must understand those that pushed for this thing, what was their vision? Because we are putting the cart before the horse, and we think we are heading in the right direction. There is so much groundwork that has to be done so that we can have all these initiatives that are very good uh, shrive 
and then yield value in the East African uh, But Sorry. also it presents opportunities for uh, institutes of education, especially the private sector, but to be able to market themselves in this East African how? region how? to attract students to Let come. Let me tell you, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the president of Rwanda was clear that if you can avoid going to Uganda, it was in the papers, I think we did this Okay, so here. Uh, excluding now, Rwanda. Let's you can't exclude Rwanda. Priscilla, you cannot Even. exclude Rwanda. It's, Even in it's these among the first, the first Even in these protocols, you find that for a long time, Tanzania has played a snail pace. And, 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 some of these things. And, and, and it's deliberate. And it's deliberate. Now, you see, when you talk about excluding any of the members, you lose the purpose of the integration. Because it's just like talking about when you're at home yeah. and the people start saying, Pane, we need to plan. Ah, but mommy said, no, let leave you. How can you leave the mother? We all have the same footing. In, and, and that's the principle. The footing must be leveraged for all state members. If one of them, as long as he's still in, unless you say let us kick out Priscilla, but as long as she's still in, and the person comes out to say, if you can avoid going to member state country, avoid it. As you, you, you can is imagine. Opening up wide and okay. whatever level. So right. the challenges, I think mm -hmm. for me, if I may say this lastly, Priscilla, that uh, this student's union is as Robert I think also has put it you are trying to put the cart before the horse and, and, and I wonder what the intention is and the latter is if you're creating the union to lobby to it, it, it's still shaking the union is being created for integration purposes that's the agenda that was in terms presented. of students yes now to integrate students on the spectrum of East African community is not helpful if what they are going to do is not integrated if it is because you may you say uh, and then if Chidabo is able to come and have discussions in Tanzania okay. or you say, so what okay. if they we cannot be allowed to, to work after taking talk one about last message not, here not uh, GMU let the students union emulate the CIMIC week and roll out services to all students let them not aim at personal gains all resources allocated to them should do uh, its rightful pass purposes uh, sergeant bennett it's easy for foreigners to work in uganda and like the reverse in our east african Definitely. community member Definitely. states so there is need for real integration look at the foreigners in, in the hospitality industry that, yes. you hardly have ugandans yes what the students body is going to recommend is it going to be respected by all pattern states when you talk of free movement and you have a country like South yeah. Sudan that will say, let that work because for Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania so for leave us, us out. Leave us out. At the end of the day, so even, the even the students union is just an arm of the entire body. It, so it cannot work independent of the entire body, okay. supporting them in the decisions and what they are going to be advocating as an East African students union. So that's where the challenge is. But I mean, if they do have the support of the Secretary General who launched them off, then we trust that maybe uh, there's going to be some fruit that will be bared of the East African uh, students regional union. But we wish them the best of luck. Good morning, you guys. Uh, does continue we get to look at the black and white of the tabloids this Monday morning later on traffic and Molen Kenyana will be back with us for weather later and climate as we crown up the seven o'clock hour good morning When you talk about our motherland Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, you cannot fail to smile because of the smile that fills the faces of the citizens. Our nice good weather and nature that sustains us all, that enables us all to continue each in their own way because we are all different even according to each individual's work. But what joins us to become one person is the sweetness from the flavored drink Alleluia Jinga Tea Drink and Alleluia Tamalin Drink. The flavor that quenches your thirst while at the same time treating and healing your body because it is 100% natural. Enjoy the drink that has got the tamarind juice in it. Made by Alleluia Reflexology, Healthy Solutions and Nutritional Research Center Limited. Get yourself a bottle of Alleluia from all shops around. You know, you could just buy a new smartphone from anywhere in Uganda. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate their 100% double data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles for three months. <laughs> Better yet, you automatically receive free 1GB valid for 30 days. <laughs> you are hooked already, aren't you?
Enjoy a 100% double data bonus from Airtel. Buy a smartphone from anywhere in Uganda and insert an Airtel SIM card. Dial star 175 star 94 hash to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Dial star 175 hash and select your preferred bundle to activate a 100% data bonus offer on weekly or monthly bundles. Valid for three months. Airtel, the smartphone network. Getting Go TV was the best decision James has ever made. Finding a good place to watch football was never easy, but it was costly until James discovered something big. Now he can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of Go TV Valley. For just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda, love it. Live from Now Avenue in UBC Studios. This is Good Morning Uganda. Keeping you informed of what is happening is our mission to ensure that you're an empowered person with information as you kick start your day. Now it's time we look at some of the stories in the dailies this morning. I have the new vision and a very big headline there. Uh, UNRWA lists roads to be tarmacked. Northern Uganda is the biggest beneficiary. So if you're in Northern Uganda or any part, know which road is that for you to push for accountability there. Then Orthodox Pope hails government. Uh, still the new vision we look at uh, that is the regulator backs NSSF payment that is the Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority has backed the 20% midterm payment for savings to workers still looking at the education uh, column there today they bring you senior two and senior three work that is physics mathematics literature biology and chemistry then uh, good news here a narrow makes skin lightening products. Scientists from the National Crop Research uh, Institute under the National Agriculture Research Organization have developed natural weight loss and skin care products from purple. So these are natural and by our own scientists. Also the vision brings you uh, th over 300 jobs and 80 tenders for you. You never know this could be your breakthrough you've been waiting for. Yes, Felix. Jovia Saleh and investor fight over the Saracini uh, security company there and of course uh, sadly the body of security body security guard found in KIU septic tank now jobs for teachers and uh, second dose yet to arrive and in healthy living I narrowly survived hmm. hysteriectomy <laughs> a park loses a 400 million in salary scam and new cities stuck over lack of enabling law well, of course, still inside the papers, Macron condemns massacre of Algerians and Nabakova suspends land commission bosses. Still here, in memories or in history today, Museveni addresses rally in Rukunjiri, that was in 1985, and U.S. takes possession of Alaska, again, that was in 1867. While well, looking at the new vision, uh, we begin with the COVID-19 tracker where new confirmed cases are 45. Positivity rate is 1.1%. We look at new deaths, two people, and uh, total death so far is 3,182. Once again, take the vaccination to avoid death, severe illness, and hospitalization, but also perfect the SOPs to ensure we reduce the spread of COVID-19. Uh, now, today in history, it was on this date, the 18th of October, but the year 1964, when 22 Roman Catholic martyrs were colonized by Pope John Paul. That is, uh, it's there and still uh, on the very date, but the year 1867, uh, Alaska formally transferred to United States. Well, facts or myth regarding COVID-19, is there any risk with food delivery services? The expert answers that.
Now in sports, no sharks, cops to scar vipers, that is KCCA. And English Premier League, Leicester Park United for four, Leicester City piled the piled pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with a 4-2 win after rivals uh, cruised uh, there. But also Simon Sesazi carries purple patch to Kigali and a uh, Lily accused of individual collective poverty after loss. Also, COVID hit URA holds nerves in calf drop and uh, weather head ground in sports there. New Vision Sport, uh, we look at all the foreign news for you there. Tall order for URA, we're looking into, that's that Sekafa Confederation Cup second round there. And also Alua Hint for peace, while they bring you the fix of the 12 parts on Alua and the sports there. So much regarding netball. The picture there of Tabani Amin with Halima Salim, uh, netballer as Alua City pushes for more into the sports arena there. But don't forget, Ruben Pima will be here to give you all the updates and the interesting stories regarding sports over the weekend that happened. Now in the Daily Nation, uh, we will be also looking at uh, some of the stories that are quite catching the eye uh, in the papers there and where you'll be looking at Uhuru Raila brought NAC like coalition and of course we see Jubilee ODM leaders also in talks bringing smaller regional uh, parties into the fold and Kenyans on winning stick with, Victoria, with victories in Amsterdam and Paris Marathon. Of course other stories still uh, looking at politics majorly where the country prepares for its head on in 2020. Too, but also in the same way we want to give you the updates in terms of traffic uh, with Priscilla. straight to Wampel Avenue and people are using that every single morning as an alternative to step away from this traffic jam that we see here on the Kampala Ginger Road and so you get to see that on Kampala Ginger Road especially at the Eta roundabout there's a red stretch that goes up to the traffic lights and also stretch that is coming in from Nakawa bringing in traffic pouring in traffic from the Eta roundabout but that's majorly for people that are trying to access the city center of Kampala Kampala through Ginger Road onto Kampala Road. Also, you do have some uh, traffic that you are picking up from Mukwano Road roundabout, which brings an intersection there with Kampala Ginger Road. And those traffic lights are definitely indicating that there's a lot of jam for traffic either way of the route. But then again, we do have traffic officers that are there to manage that traffic. Away from that, if you look at a sneak peek onto the rest of Ginger Road heading to Kampala Road, there's not so much traffic motion is uh, very easy for you on that route within this time frame later on maybe it may become a little bit congested you look at the industrial area 6th street namuongo road all have indicators of some bumpy areas of course on namuongo road this particular bumpy area is because of the potholes that are around the total uganda offices there and that is why you do have those uh, orange zones there and of course the interaction here for people coming in from both 
Bogo Road connecting to Namuongo Road also because it's a sharp corner and uh, because of the drainage system that is poor on either side and if you don't take that sharp corner easily especially for traffic that is coming in from Bogo Road connecting to Namuongo Road you may end up falling on a ditch in the drainage but away from that looking at the 6th street you do have uh, some red zones and orange zones in particular areas because of the poor state of the road in these areas looking at old Port Bell Road you get to see that old Port Bell Road this morning is actually surprisingly clear all the way into the heart of Bugolovi and then if we are to stay on the Kampala Ginger Road following it all the way into Nakawa you get to see that only where you do have uh, cross sections or intersections with other roads is where you are seeing sneak peeks of traffic jam uh, the traffic jam at Lugogo Mall is expected because of the traffic lights that uh, do manage that traffic there of course we are seeing a lot of traffic along red line there at the Nakawa market you're seeing a lot of traffic in that regard because of commuter taxis that are making this place a stage so they are picking up or dropping off percentages for that matter on either side influencing the way traffic is looking like of course Catalina Road is also bringing in traffic for people that are staying in Tinder 2 area and they will use, usually use Catalina 2 Road to connect to Nakawa to be able to then end up in other parts of the region still in Nakawa division looking at Spear Motors it also has a lot of traffic jam especially coming in from Tinder Strater and then also traffic that is connecting to Tinder Strater even though the road is now better looking because of the reconstruction that happened to it but uh, because it's a trade area lots of trucks are on the road to distribute goods uh, for different companies within that region which affects the flow of jam but also so many vehicles residences that are coming in from Chireka Banda where you get it uh, bring in that traffic and so it's usually going to be cumbersome we want to come back here to Kampala Central Division and look at some of those routes so Yusuf Lule Road in getting on to what you would call a cash route there there are some spots that are having some traffic jam but uh, there's new traffic lights that have started functioning and so those are the ones that are showing indicators of uh, orange zone so where you see an orange zone it's simply because there is a traffic light ahead that is uh, managing the traffic because of the different routes that come and cross within Acacia Mall looking at Kololo basically it's not so much jam within the Kololo area except up until where you have to interface with the Kololo airstrip traffic lights that is where you're expecting some bit of jam but away from that the areas of Kololo are best alternative routes for people that are coming in from Tinder, Nakawa, you can go through Kololo, connect to Acacia, then you can be able to connect into Nakasero, that way you are in downtown Kampala this morning. Away from that of course Mulago is expected to have red zones this morning because of the heavy traffic that is coming in from either sides. Uh, Mulago coming in from Kira Road, coming in also from the other side of Kalere trying, people are trying to connect to the Yusuf Lule Road, that is where you would be seeing some jam so those are some of the high peak places that you are expecting to have jam this morning but Molen Kenyana had talked about um, something that was interesting earlier on and uh, the rights of the environment a clean environment Molen Kenyana uh, talk to us more about this right to have a clean environment well, uh, they are basic human rights, but I think there has been a gap when it comes to protecting nature. But now we have seen that the UN Human Rights Council has come out to actually confirm and make resolutions to make a clean and healthy environment as a human right. Now, let me give you a little bit of history where this is coming from. Now, some of the governments that have really tried on this action in 2019, we do have, we did have a group of indigenous people coming to courts to sue the government on part of the land that was give, being given out uh, to, to do oil exploration. Now, this indigenous group was suing the government of Ecuador for having uh, given out this land. Then last year we saw the court make a ruling in protecting that is 500,000 acres of land. Now, uh, the courts said that this land um, belongs to the people and since the people had all you know the evidence that they brought to court this land shouldn't be used for um, for oil exploration 
The ruling was made and that land is actually uh, off, the, off uh, the government's hands. They have left it and it is protected. But also this comes from not just the indigenous communities that are coming out, but also environmental activists. And according to a statement last week from the UN uh, ex uh, UNEP executive director, Ms. Anderson, she says that this is something that she's looking at as uh, courts governments should take on in a plea to actually make sure that governments are doing what they can to protect the environment. Now that picture shows uh, the, the, um, that indigenous community that actually sued the, the government of Ecuador uh, about this land. Now also more that is coming in shows that uh, as we look at the 2020 call for action, that is the call for action on human rights, that was passed uh, last month by the UN Secretary General. This is something that we should be looking at now. In other news, we do have Voice of the Oceans in Brazil now. What happens is that the statue of Christ in Brazil, that is in Rio de Janeiro, was painted blue. They put uh, reflections of blue to simplify the voice of the oceans campaign that is moving on across the world. Now, I found this picture really interesting today because they are trying to make sure they promote a campaign that is looking at ending plastics, that is plastic pollution within the oceans. Now, the, sail, the sailing is on. They did start in uh, Brazil. Now, they will be going across the oceans, right from the Pacific to the Caribbean, but the warm welcome in Rio de Janeiro is something that I really liked so much. And for them to paint that statue of Christ blue, just to simplify how much they need a clean environment, they need a clean uh, you know, marine system, is something that I found interesting today and uh, wanted to share with you guys. I mean, this is something that we are looking at in terms of marine protection. We have have had pollution but we can see that now at least a lot of voices are coming up now voices of the oceans uh, is a campaign that has been moving around the world to talk about more uh, in terms of protecting our oceans now also we look at the fact that we've had a lot of extreme weather events uh, going on across the world and this morning we did cover a story that was looking at uh, the flooding in Kerala. Now more of that is also uh, to do with the fact that we've had heavy rains across Asia. Now India has been a victim of these floods for over time. Now what we are looking at in terms of uh, in terms of extreme weather is that we now start to see some of these heavy rains actually causing flooding and also taking lives this morning we do have reports of uh, death across india that is as a result of uh, this uh, flooding and uh, that is something devastating not only there but even here in uganda we have had uh, we have had uh, uh, flooding last week across bududa now landslides all as a result of uh, heavy rains now my concern is the frequency at which this is happening bududa has been a hot spot uh, for landslides and I'm glad that now the Prime Minister has come out to address this issue and she did actually tell people to involve themselves in planting trees. This is a campaign that we've been talking about over and over each day. Uh, planting trees on those slopes will help at least keep that land in line and also for the flooding waters, the running waters from the rains to stop. And also she also did emphasize on the fact that people should move from the areas that are really in a bad place when it comes to landslides. I hope that people listen because we're looking at more of these events. We can't uh, stop them but we can only adapt. There is, uh, we need to harmonize with nature now and find a way to live with it. So that is a good move that I saw from the Prime Minister there. Well, away from that, we want to look at how the weather is looking like for this morning. Now, from the satellites, it looks like we have had mostly a clear start of into today. We are seeing mostly clear skies. We do have mostly uh, sunshine across the eastern part of Uganda, uh, moving all the way across to the Karamoja region, just sunny skies, and also across central. Even here in Kampala, we are seeing mostly sunny skies now there are clouds that are starting to develop but that is mostly across western uganda we do have uh, at least around the renzori region that area is starting to develop uh, clouds but we do expect rains to develop later in the day now 
there is a rainy system that is uh, close to northern Uganda that is already starting to move in right from uh, that is South Sudan but that will be affecting most areas that is across uh, northern Uganda mostly across Gulu we are looking at Padel that area can expect to have rains later in the day but we'll go ahead and take a look at our forecast for this morning to see what areas are expected to have at least uh, sunny intervals or even in terms of our uh, temperatures now this morning starting off with the central lake victoria basin we do have kampala and tebe wakiso and mikono we are forecasting a mix of clouds and sunshine and that is expected to start off at 25 degrees centigrade now we look at the central northern Uganda where we have Ajumani, Gulu, Kitugum, we do have Padel, that area is already starting to have the rainy system developing, we will be seeing those rains in the morning but also starting off at a warm 27 degrees centigrade and that rainy system is expected to continue into the afternoon. Now looking at the eastern parts of central where we have Ruero, we have Wobulenzi, Bururi, we have Nakaseke. We are looking at uh, intervals of sunny and cloudy conditions as well. And that will be starting off with a warm 27 degrees centigrade. But also we do have rains in the forecast for later in the afternoon over that area. Now eastern Uganda, that is where we have Soroti, Katakui, we have Amuria and Kumi. We are forecasting a mix of clouds and sunshine. Also starting off with a warm morning at 27, but also that area is likely to develop rains. But that will be later in the afternoon, also over a few areas. Now the eastern part of Black Victoria, where we have Tororo, Iganga, Busia, Jinja, that is expected to start off with the rainy conditions. Those will be over a few areas, especially those close to the lake and also that will be starting off at 26 but we could see that system clear as we head into the afternoon now looking at Mount Elgin Highland where we have uh, Mbale, we have Bududa, Buko, Sironko starting off with uh, quite clear skies even as we speak but that is expected to have also intervals of cloudy conditions starting off at 26 degrees centigrade now we look at southwestern Uganda, that is where we have Barara, Ivan, Dabushenyi, Rubirizi. We are forecasting a mix of clouds and sunshine, also starting off at a pleasant 26 degrees centigrade. That area can expect to have sunny intervals as well as we talk about the afternoon. Now more still looking at uh, the western part of Lake Victoria, we do have Masaka, Kalisizo, Sembabule and uh, Rakai. We are looking at a uh, day starting off with isolated showers. Those will be coming in later as we head into the afternoon, starting off at 25. But we will see that system continue into the afternoon. You can expect to have rains over there and that is most likely to clear by evening. But this morning we are still uh, keeping our eyes on that system that is coming towards northern Uganda that will be bringing in rains especially across uh, Gulu in that area also across the northwestern part of the country that is where we have Arua Yumbe you can expect to start off with rains this morning I will leave you at that and uh, later we'll be having good morning Uganda agenda Robert will be here to take you through that and then after we'll look at sports I know Ruben has much to say especially about uh, the Star Times uh, Premier League and you can look out for more of the programming we do have good morning Uganda agenda I mean extra that will be uh, also kicking off after sports. My name is Monen Kenyana. I wish you a good morning. Smile when I think of you, Uganda, my home. My home, I dance when I look at you, Uganda, my home. Oh, my Uganda. I know with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together, my home.
At MTN, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also 